Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely hit like and subscribe so that you can see future videos as well. So there's two questions I get fairly frequently in the comment section. The first one is, how do I actually go about learning more about investing and get, getting started with investing? You know, I'm, I'm brand new to the stock market or I've never invested before. So how do I go about learning the basics? Um, and the second question I get is what's going on in this bookcase over here? It's always in the background. I want to see what's on it. So um, those two questions are quite closely linked together. Uh, one of the ways I often recommend people to learn more about investing, one of the ways that I've learned a lot more about investing is just through reading. So um, putting a whole bunch of competing thoughts up in this brain up here and having them kind of battle it out to which one I think is the most appropriate way to go about investing your money. So um, I set the goal at the start of 2019 of reading 12 books this year on investing um, so one one book per month I also set the goal of uh, filming 52 YouTube videos so um, I'm well ahead of schedule on both fortunately so um, I don't know how many videos I've uploaded but um, I'm well on track to hitting that 50 so let's continue the momentum there um, but on the reading front so we're at the start of August now and I've already read 10 books so um, well ahead of schedule on that one and I thought I'd basically run you through uh, some books that or all of the books on investing that I've read so far in 2019 and give you some quick thoughts on each of them. Uh, I'll also give you a couple of honorary mentions for some that I read in late 2018 because they're classics and they're kind of the ones I often recommend people to start out with. So let's get into it. So I'm going to do this a little bit backwards and get the honorary mentions out of the way first. So uh, the first one is Rich Dad Poor Dad. So I read this in probably early 2018. And this is the first book on money that I ever read in my whole life. Um, and it's the first book that probably a lot of people read on money in their whole life. So this goes through a lot of the basics of why you should be an investor, why um, you know saving money over time is a bad idea and you should be investing money instead and really gets clear in your brain uh, the difference between assets and liabilities and how rich people think about money versus how poor people think about money. So highly, highly recommend that one. Um, the other one is The Intelligent Investor. So this is the second book on money I ever read, having um, heard a lot of you know positive things about it from Warren Buffett and from several value investors. I think reading this one second, to be perfectly honest, was a mistake. <laughs> It's it's fairly heavy and it's fairly advanced, in my mind at least, for the absolute beginner. So there's a couple of books um, further down this list that I, I would recommend actually reading first. But now that I've kind of got some of that basic stuff uh, in my head and then look back through The Intelligent Investor, that makes a whole lot of sense now. Um, the chapters I really enjoyed the most are chapter, I believe it's nine, which is around Mr. Market, and chapter 20, which is around margin of safety. So definitely check that one out if you haven't already. So those are honorary mentions. Uh, I thought I'd chuck them in there because they're definitely classics. Um, they're, they're two money and investing books that every investor should probably have on their bookshelf. So those are the first ones. Let's get into the books that I've read in 2019. So the first one is Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. And this is a very thick book. As you can see, it's around uh right around 650 pages of some pretty small font so uh it took me a while to get through but it was probably a little bit lower down on my list of of rankings for what i've read this year and um, there was some really beneficial stuff in there around how to increase your income over time and how to build good habits early around saving money and investing more and more and more over time as you kind of go up the kind of income ladder that I really enjoyed. Um, there's also a big section in here interviewing some of the great investors. So um, interviewing people like Carl Icahn, like Ray Dalio, uh, a short interview with Warren Buffett even. Um, so there's some really cool stuff in there if you want to learn about their personal investing strategies. But um, Tony Robbins writing style, I'm not a massive fan of, to be honest. I feel like there's a lot of volume and not a whole lot of content in a lot of Tony Robbins books. So um, although I did enjoy it, it's probably a little bit lower down on my ranking list, but that's the first book I read in 2019. So that's the first one. Second one, and I'm actually gonna grab these two because I've read uh, both of them at pretty much the same time. The Education of a Valley Investor by Guy Spear and The Dando Investor by Monish Prabhai. So if you've watched some of my videos before, these two guys are some of my favorite investors on the face of the earth and they're also good friends so i, I read these two at basically the same time um so first off the dando investor the low risk high, uh, the low risk value method to high returns this is a book that has some very interesting stories in it 
and I think it gives some great examples of like the title kind of says, um, low risk, high return opportunities. So it walks through um, some examples of stocks that Monish Pabrai has invested in. Um, if you don't know who Monish Pabrai is, I'll put a photo of him up here. He's a very famous investor, very successful investor and manages about a billion dollars these days. So um, Monish invests in what he likes to call free lottery tickets. So he invests in companies where in the worst case scenario, there's not a lot of downside. In the best case scenario, there's massive upside. So he does this by often investing in very low PE companies, um, companies that have a lot of assets behind them in a very sort of Ben Graham-ish style. Um, and he also walks through some examples of entrepreneurs that take that sort of low downside, high upside approach. So he talks about the Patel family, the Patel family moved to America with uh, from India with around $10,000 to their name. They now own around 40% of all the hotels in America. So pretty incredible story there. So that's Dando Investor. Probably my top two or three favorite books that I've read this year so far. The Education of a Value Investor by Guy Spear. Um, I know this is early in the list, but this is probably the best book I've read in 2019, if not in my whole life. <laughs> just, to, just to put it out there bluntly. So this is awesome. This is not probably hugely educational on how to go about the basics of investing, but it's a very, very, very cool story about Guy Spear himself. So um, if you don't know who Guy Spear is, again, uh, recently well-known value investor, but essentially Guy Spear came out into the workforce as a very, very highly educated young man uh, in the world of finance. And he started out on Wall Street in a firm that um, is fairly actually comparable to um, the firm that you see in the movie Wolf of Wall Street. So there's some pretty, uh, there's some big money being made, but some pretty heinous things going on. And he basically walks through his life and the things that he changed. So he discovered value investing. He discovered this world of, of Warren Buffett and, and all the surrounding uh, investors, Ben Graham and that sort of thing. Uh, but he talks about going through the financial crisis, how he managed that. He talks through actually having lunch with Warren Buffett and Monish Pabrai was part of that as well. He talks about meeting Monish Pabrai. He talks about his very wealthy father um, giving him basically all of his net worth to invest for him <laughs> very early after going out on his own. And that was sort of a nerve wracking experience as well. So I highly recommend the education of a value investor. And that is the next one. So. Let's keep going down the list and I'm throwing all these like books on the floor so I'm going to have to remember which order they go on. Um, so the next one is sort of a group. These are three Phil Town books. Two of them are actually the same here. Um, I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, the first one is Rule One. So um, if you ever have seen some of my videos where I walk through the 4M analysis of a company, that's basically where this comes from. So meaning, moat, management, margin of safety, that's kind of the... 4M checklist that we sort of walk through uh, when we assess a company that came straight from rule one. If you've watched my video on uh, valuing Apple stock, that also came straight from rule one. Um, so great book, um, highly recommend that for beginners. That's probably one of the books I'd read before going into the intelligent investor if I were to kind of do it over again. So um, that was really great. The only thing I didn't like about that is there's probably about the back third roughly of the book is quite heavily focused on trading as opposed to investing and using sort of technical signals on when to get in and out and in and out of stocks. Something I'm not a huge fan of personally. Um, Phil was talking through using that strategy in tax deferred accounts, so Roth IRAs and IRAs over in the States, not hugely applicable to me. Um, but in terms of getting the basics down to long-term investing, really, really good. So the second book is Payback Time, and I've got two copies of them here. So um, one of you guys actually sent me this copy of Payback Time. So shout out to Lewis. Um, he sent me basically a signed copy after going to one of Phil's workshops. So that was very, very cool. Sent it all the way from the States to New Zealand um, out of his own pocket and everything like that. So really appreciate that. Um, this is the copy I originally got, this sort of little paperback version. Um, but Payback Time is awesome. Payback Time basically... Um, was written after the financial crisis by Phil Town, and it walks through the concept of reducing basis and increasing your margin of safety. So um, it still has those core 4M principles and, and sort of buying a company for less than it's worth principles. But 
he really stresses the power of continuing to buy as a company goes down in price, assuming that the underlying value of the company stays the same and using that um, to enhance your return. So um, that's the first thing. The other thing is walking through the actual payback time method of valuing a company. So we had the kind of pseudo discounted cash flow method that's used in rule one. We also now have something called payback time, which takes you through an example of if you were to buy a private business, how you would uh, basically go about that in a similar way, um, but also looking at another method through free cash flow and trying to um, assess how much time basically it would take you to get your money back when you make an investment. So that's the second one. The third book, I haven't actually got it here because my girlfriend is reading it at the moment, but pretend that's here. I'm going to put a... Um, screenshot of the of the what the book looks like over there um, and that is invested also by phil town but also co-authored with his daughter danielle town so that uh only came out basically this year i think um really enjoyed that book as well if you can't be bothered reading rule one and payback time um, feel free to go straight to invested it has a lot of the basics it's basically a refresher on rule one and payback time with a lot of extras added in um, so it walks through a third method of valuation called owner earnings and owner earnings is something that um, warren buffett wrote about in the 80s i think it was off the top of my head um, and essentially he's walking through how you can uh, analyze the financial statements of a company to make them comparable, um, to make all companies comparable. So to make um, Apple comparable to Microsoft, to make that comparable to a rental property, to make that comparable to a farm and kind of stack up all these investment opportunities equally and see which one's the best kind of bang for your buck um, in terms of the returns you can expect. So that was quite a cool approach. It also follows Danielle's kind of journey into investing and being taught by Phil Town after working as a lawyer and stressed out of her mind and having health issues and all sorts of things. Um, and then discovering the world of investing and compounding your money. So very, very cool story. Um, highly recommend that one. So those are the Phil Town books. Uh, the next one is not really an investing book, but Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Again, it's another very thick one. I think this is about 650 pages or so as well. This book is, like I said, not really about money, but it's definitely got kind of an entrepreneurship type um, vibe to it. Um, it's basically split into three sections, so health, wealth, and wisdom. And if you don't know who Tim Ferriss is, he runs a very popular podcast interviewing very famous people and, and people in the health, wealth and wisdom kind of areas. So um, essentially each sort of chapter is only two or three or four pages long typically. Um, essentially each chapter is basically an interview with a different person. So a summary of all the podcasts that he's ever done. Um, and there's some very famous people in here like Jamie Foxx, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, all sorts of different people. So definitely enjoy that i did to be honest with you skip a lot of the health things um there wasn't a huge amount of benefit i got out of several of those um i feel like i'm reasonably well versed in the sort of training and nutrition kind of area having trained in powerlifting for a long time if you didn't know that so um i skipped a lot of that stuff i did start having cold showers and different things like that after reading some of the tony robbins sections in there but um skipped a lot of the health stuff the wealth stuff was awesome a lot of really good entrepreneurship type stories in there and the wisdom stuff was was great as well so definitely recommend that and the i have a very short attention span so um the fact that these chapters are only two or three or four pages long uh, was quite useful for sort of keeping me on track and and following a story that's changing all the time so um highly recommend that one that's tools of titans and thanks to my sister who actually got me this as well <laughs> so that is that one the next one is one up on wall street so um this is probably one of the most famous investing books of all time and for good reason so peter lynch is probably the most successful and one of the most well-known growth investors of all time and he walks through essentially how everyday people can have an edge over some of the professional investors so he's looking at how to identify a company in your everyday life how to judge whether new products are actually going to have a um you know a big impact on the overall company if you to, were to invest in one um and i found it really really beneficial so it's not a huge book um 
I'm probably going to sit down at some point and read this um, again because the messages in it were awesome. Um, and Peter Lynch had like insane returns, like 29% a year through his um, career as a mutual fund manager. So very, very successful guy and very um, inspiring and, and instructive book. I, it's very practical in terms of the way that you kind of discover companies and, and what to look for and that sort of thing. The one thing it was a little bit light on was valuation. So Phil Towns books, for example, are very heavy on valuation. Um, the Dando Investor was a little bit as well. Um, this definitely focuses more on the economics of a business and not so much on what price you should be um, willing to pay for a business. Uh, but I did really enjoy it. Um, great read, highly recommend that one. So that's one up on Wall Street. Just a couple more to go. So the first one, is damn right so this is a um, basically a biography on charlie munger by janet lowe so janet lowe has written a few different biographies on some of these value guys now so i'm actually reading a second one at the moment which i'll get to in a sec uh basically the uh in, a, in five seconds this is not an investing book it's about the life of charlie munger but i highly recommend that Char charlie munger is insanely um intelligent guy and a very successful guy starts out talking about his early career or about him growing up and then his early career in real estate before discovering value investing uh goes through him meeting warren buffett and getting into berkshire hathaway and some pretty entertaining fishing stories and and about um how warren and charlie actually sunk a boat once which was quite interesting as well so that is that one and the final investing book that I have read so far this year is Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits by Phil Fisher. So um, I'm going to get this quote wrong, but Warren Buffett once said something along the lines of my investing strategy is 80% Ben Graham and 20% Phil Fisher, or those percentages may be flipped or they may be entirely different numbers, but he said something to that effect. And he really, really hypes up kind of this book by phil fisher common stocks and uncommon profits the version i've got here actually um includes a couple of other writings so it includes uh conservative investors sleep well and also developing an, an investment philosophy i haven't actually read those parts i just read the first sort of book in here which is common stocks and uncommon profits as the sort of cover suggests um the content in this book was really, really good. It talks through, um, again, how you pick up a company and identify a company that is suitable to be held for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, something that's gonna continue to grow and produce high returns in the future. Basically the strategy that Buffett uses today. Um, but I found Phil Fisher, unfortunately, an incredibly boring writer. <laughs> um, so although I enjoyed the content, I really had to battle through this one. And this took me a surprisingly long time to read like 180 pages or whatever it is of that first section. So um, if you're a battler and want to get into that one, uh, that's probably a good option. I will read the other two sections of that at some point. But honestly it took me far too long to get through so I, I moved on and started reading something else in the meantime so that's something i may come back to um but yeah that's my thoughts on on that one so that is phil fisher and those are the 10 books that i've read so far this year i'm actually reading another two at the moment um i can let you know my thoughts on those once i'm done the first one is how to win friends and influence people not really an investing book but personal development book and um one of probably the most famous books of all time, which I've never actually read. So How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie is a guy that run a, ran a speaking course back in the day that Buffett went to and you know it, it opened up his world and been able to actually speak in public and talk to people. So uh, interesting one there. And I'm also reading another Janet Lowe book. So that's the person who wrote the Charlie Munger biography. Um, her book, Ben Graham on Investing. So uh, it's a very small book, but I'm just starting out on that one. And this is basically the story of Ben Graham's life. So that was Warren Buffett's original teacher. He's sort of the Dean of Wall Street, as they call him, and the original sort of pioneer of these value investing ideas. So, right, let's breathe. I tried to race through that a little bit. Um, this video is getting very long already, but I, you know, we're talking about 10 books. So I had to kind of, uh, it's a lot to get through. I tried to be brief on each of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video um, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.